What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here. We're coming at you with another two minute drill episode to re to to end our week, March nineteenth, on a Friday. Man, the work week is over. We're going into an awesome weekend. We got March Madness. We got awesome D two FCS football. As always, man, I'm excited to watch that Jackson State team play. We'll have that recap coming Monday, as always, guys. But right now, we got some big news, you know, in terms of HBCU football that really made, I guess, big headlines today. And, you know, it was a huge announcement from the Black College Football Hall of Fame today as they created or put into put a plan into place to have an HBCU legacy game which is going to serve as a showcase for the top draft eligible players from HBCU universities. And this is a huge announcement, guys, an absolutely huge announcement because it gives these players a platform to further their careers, puts them on a national stage for NFL scouts, staffs, media, everything. It puts them on center stage. You get things like the Senior Bowl, guys. I, I get that. The Senior Bowl, one of the great events. I mean, it's in my hometown of Mobile, Alabama. But I don't think enough of these players from the HBCUs get invited. I, th I believe this year only about three players from the HBCUs were invited to the Senior Bowl. And they, they showed out a lot of them. You know, all three of them, I think, really improved their draft stock. And we're, we're talking now – this game's going to invite almost a hundred players. They said it's going to be roughly around a hundred. So that creates so many more opportunities and chances for a lot of these players who might be overlooked in terms of NFL scouts or something like that to really put themselves on the map for an NFL team. And personally, I think we could see higher round picks coming out of these HBCU schools terms of first, second round talent, because there's a lot of them that get drafted in the later rounds that were just overlooked because of the level of exposure, the level of perceived competition. And so I think this game is going to go a long way in establishing that. And so the co-founder of the Hall of Fame, Doug Williams, that name might sound familiar to y'all. Williams is probably one of the greatest HBCU players of all time. He was a first-round pick for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, was a Super Bowl champion, a Super Bowl MVP for the Was for, for the now the Washington football team. And he announced that the game is going to be held February 12th, guys, at the Tulane facilities. This is a few, this is about a week or so after the Super Bowl. So people are going to be, I guess, hungry for football. And all those NFL scouts are going to be available to get down there to New Orleans, have a great venue, a great city to really celebrate this. And one big thing that I think some people are going to overlook is this is in the month of February, Black History Month. It's an, it's all, it's almost the perfect thing to do for in terms of college football to celebrate the HBCUs and what these players are doing that I think the average fan overlooks. And I'm guilty of it too. I'll be the first one to admit I overlooked a lot of the talent and what was going on at these HBCU schools. And now that I started this podcast, getting into this national coverage of college football, listen, I'm to be honest with y'all, having this FCS season, having these HBCUs and all these uh, all these overlooked schools play in the spring with less distractions of all the D1 news and coverage that we have to do, I think it offered a huge step in visibility, a huge step in interest, and it created a lot of fans like myself who's going to watch a lot of these games now on the weekend, and I'm invested. And I think that could carry over to next season, even if they move back into the fall and go heads up against D1. I'm still going to be paying attention and watching some of these games. And, you know, this – this kind of comes on the heels of a huge movement. I know Jamel Hill was very vocal. I know there's a few players that have already started to jump on this movement where more African-American athletes are being pushed to play for HBCUs. And, you know, there's this, I guess, stigma surrounding, you know, you can't go to an HBCU because you're not going to get the visibility. The scouts aren't going to find you there. The facilities ain't there. The uniforms aren't there. The fan base isn't there. The connections aren't there. 
And this is going to be a huge step in terms of quieting that debate about visibility and opportunities, because now you're going to have a huge one in February, especially if you're, you know, you, I think, you know, the players who have a realistic shot at the NFL are going to be at this game. And if I don't know, you know, this was just announced today, I don't know the details. What about the players that are good enough to play in this game and the Senior Bowl? I, th I think that's going to be huge because they could probably go to the Senior Bowl, make some really great impressions, and then go back to this game and play in this HBCU Legacy Bowl and really shine. And the thing, I, the thing that I think separates us from the Senior Bowl is there's going to be a lot of pride, I think, for a lot of these athletes to play in this game. It's not going to be kind of like the Devontae Smiths and stuff that are going to go down there and be like, I don't want to play in this game because of injury, because of this. They're going to be like, man, I want to represent my school, my family, my name in the HBCU Legacy Bowl. And I think you're going to see a lot of players opt in that, you know, their equivalent D1, you know, peers aren't going to play in the senior bowl or even show up or put their career or money or uh, draft stock on the line. And listen, money and funding are the next big steps, but this is a huge step. There's still a lot of work to do guys in terms of getting HBCUs back on the equal back in equal footing with powerful D1 institutes that you see dominating the country. But this is a step to bring them back up to speed. And Deion Sanders down there in Jackson State is showing that with the proper funding, with the proper support, you can build something special at the HBCU level. And this is just in year one. In a COVID-riddled offseason with all kind of weird stuff happening, he's showing out and showing that it can be done. I think he's laying the blueprint for future coaches and future programs to really make a, a lasting impact here. He's using that funding to that greatly impacts recruiting to build a new stadium, uh, get new uniforms. And, you know, he, it, there was a speech he released um, on his Instagram. Go check it out. And he was talking to his players after practice. And he was like, it's my job when this um, legal battle over name, image, likeness laws comes into effect. He said, I want to personally brand you guys to be successful. I want you to get the sponsorships. I want you to get the trucks from the dealership, et cetera. He said, that is what I'm lining you guys up to do. He said that he hosts like mock interviews and things like that for his players. And I think that is so amazing. And I think more coaches need to be hands-on involved, especially as these uh, name image likeness laws begin to really go into effect. I mean, you got to prepare these kids to go on to the future. Deion Sanders is showing it can be done, and I'm hoping more talented coaches and players take their talents to HBCU schools and build them up like we're seeing down there in Jackson State. And, you know, the history is there for HBCUs. I know, you know, if you're an average fan, you're like, man, this isn't what I signed up to listen to. Well, you're most people are just uneducated about the history of HBCUs and the dominance that they show back in the day. I mean, it doesn't get talked about enough. Luckily, in the ESPN College Football 150 thing they did a year back, they had a really great show and segments and things highlighting, you know, the dominance of HBCUs, the talent that was coming out, the coaching excellence that was there, the fan support, the sellouts, all that kind of stuff. And I don't think it gets talked about enough. And I mean, listen, uh, we, we've been gaining a lot of subscribers recently, man. Shout out to y'all. I'm going to talk a little, about the, a little about that at the end, but... If y'all want to hear, you know, me to start like a short series about HBCUs, I mean, we can talk about individual universities, players, moments, things like that. It's like an educational series that I'll start on the YouTube channel. Comment down below and let me know or find, hit me up on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Hit hit our, hit the Blue Bloods DMs, hit my DMs, um, or comment down below on these videos that you want to see that and i'll put that on for y'all i'll do some i'll do my research as well and we'll we'll release like one or two of those a week and kind of cover the history of hbcu so more people who you know might not be as educated about the history there can be educated and i mean let's look at some of the players that dominate the history of hbcus i mean jerry rice deacon jones walter payton steve mcnair shannon sharp the GOAT, in my opinion, and Michael Strahan. All these guys come from H HBCUs, and they make major impacts in the NFL and are Hall of Famers or on their way to be Hall of Famers. Listen, as I said, a lot of progress has been made, guys. 
but we have so much further to go. And this is only going to help increase the visibility of HBCU athletes, programs, and coaches. And hopefully it will help HBCU sell their vision to the best recruits in the country. And we can get a wi wider range of parity across college football and have HBCUs competing for national titles, competing in the spotlight of college football, which I think is better for everybody. And I'm really, really excited to see where this goes. But this was a huge first step. Shout out to the Black College Football Hall of Fame. Shout out to Doug Williams and everyone else who had a fighting hand in this. And I really want to see who are going to be the coaches in the game. Are you going to get the best HBCU coaches? Are you going to get NFL staff like the Senior Bowl has come down there and coach? I want to see more details come out about that. But I will update y'all when they make those announcements. But for right now, the HBCU, HBCU Legacy Bowl coming at you February 2022. I'm pumped. You should be pumped, too. And it's going to be one you aren't going to want to miss. But, guys, that is a wrap for this two-minute drill, a wrap on our two-minute drills throughout the week. And I just wanted to say I appreciate y'all supporting us, man. We have been gaining support, gaining followers, I mean, at an astronomical rate, guys. Our YouTube channel is growing so exponentially. So make sure, if you love these two-minute drill episodes, to be interactive in the comments, man. Let me know y'all's opinion. We can discuss them on each episode and also make sure to subscribe if you are a listener and you think about subscribing I already said once we get to 100 we're dropping some exclusive merch and we're going to pick a random 10 people in that first 100 to give free merch to so make sure you subscribe turn on your post notifications that way you're notified anytime we drop a two minute drill a blue bloods episode or any sort of content on this youtube channel and like I said, if you are interested in the history of HBCUs, let me know and I can start a short series up where we can educate everyone on the history of HBCU football. I think it'd be a great series to have right now. And I think a lot of people are going to benefit from it. So, guys, I appreciate all your support, man. Make sure to check out the podcast. Catch up on our Big Ten and 31 Days episodes this month. We aren't we don't have a normal episode today, but so go back and catch this episode and other episodes in our back catalog. Next week, we're going to wrap up our Big Ten in 31 Days, and we have some awesome guests lined up for next month when we start our Big 12 in 30 Days uh, theme as well. And, of course, Monday through Friday, two-minute drill episodes right here with your boy. And so, guys, I appreciate y'all. But for myself, the Blue Bloods, and the two-minute drill, we are out. <laughs>